Okay, I wanted to leave the last problem up there. You know, my goodness, 10 solutions between 0 and 2 pi. Uh, but I want to show you on a calculator. Um, here's what I have. The original function was sine of 5x, and that was supposed to equal negative 1 half. So you can see I have, I can't think in the mirror. All right, the first function I have is just the normal sine graph. Second function, the sine of 5x, and the third function, y equals negative 0.5, just to show you here. So when I go to graph this, okay, I do have this from 0 to 2 pi. You can see that sine of 5x, just like we thought, horizontally compressed by a factor of 1 fifth. Now, if I remove the original sine graph, might get a better idea here, so let me just clear this guy out and re-graph this. Okay, so we just have sine of 5x, and we have negative 1 half, and you can see we actually do have 10 solutions. There's no way I can do this backwards. It's not even going to work. All right, so 10 solutions. Count them up from 0 to 2 pi. It is hitting, I'm saying it, I'm referring to the y equals negative 1 half, is hitting that sine of 5x at 10 locations. What are they? Well, yeah, that's what we got right here. All right, so algebraically speaking, this is the way you want to handle it. Um, I don't know if there's an easier way. So if we just list out multiples you know, of these particular angles. We're looking basically at coterminals. That's all we're doing by adding this 12 pi over 6, which is just 2 pi. So just get coterminal angles for these. How many you're going to need? Uh, there is a way to determine it, but it's not a hard and fast rule guaranteed by any stretch of the imagination. So, you know, let's not try to come up with rules here. Just list a bunch of them and then, you know, uh, figure out which ones you don't want after that. Again, we figured out the ones we didn't want because you're solving the equation 5x equals 7 pi 6, 5x equals 19 pi 6, 5x equals 31 pi 6. You're dividing each of those by 5. Once we got out here, as we saw, 67 pi 30 67 divided by 30 puts us over the 2 pi threshold. So, you know, that was our restriction. So we only got 10 solutions, only 10 solutions for this equation. All right. Let's take a look at this one. This promises to be a little tamer, but sometimes I get a little overconfident here. Let's see how this one plays out. All right, so we have tangent of 2x equals the square root of 3. Now, we do have a tangent double angle formula, but I don't think that that's really what we want here. You know, the 2 tan of x over 1 minus tan squared x equals the square root of 3. That, that could work. I suppose if you cross multiply um, and then factored, that might actually work. I don't want to think about it, though. Because what if this is a 3 or a 4 or a 5? Um, not going to happen. So I'm thinking... Maybe I don't want to do a tangent double angle here. Let's just say, like we did last time, let, ah, let u equal 2x. And so we are solving tangent of u equals the square root of 3, at least initially. So tangent of u equals the square root of 3. Start with your principal value. That'll help us from 0 to 360, and then ultimately 0 to 2 pi. So what is the tan inverse of the square root of 3? That is 60 degrees. 60 degrees, or docking pi thirds. So if we go 0 to 360, x less than or equal to 360, as per usual, we can say 60 is solid. We'll take it. It is between 0 and 360. Well, where else is tangent positive besides quadrant 1? The answer is quadrant 3. So quadrant 3, reference of 60, we're looking at 240 degrees. 
you know, 180 plus 60 more. So 240 degrees. Ultimately, let's go to radians here. So zero less than or equal to x, less than or equal to two pi. 60 degrees, we've already said, is pi thirds. How many 60 degree angles is 240? Be four pi thirds. All right, so what we did last time is we said, okay, what is u equal? u equals pi thirds or four pi thirds. But unfortunately, this was not the problem given to us. They didn't say tangent of u equals the square root of three. They said tangent of two x equals the square root of three. Well, we let u equal two x temporarily. Let's start listing some multiples because we got to change the u back into a two x here. So what are we adding? You know, we're adding two pi, AKA in this case, we need a third. Looks like six pi thirds to make it easy. Let me add correctly this time. Pi thirds plus six pi thirds, seven pi thirds, plus six pi thirds is 13 pi thirds, plus six pi thirds is 19 pi thirds. How much further? And add another six pi thirds, that's 25 pi thirds. Heck, I'm gonna say etc. If we do the coterminal angles for four, four pi thirds, well, you get your 10 pi thirds, you get your 16 pi thirds, uh, your 22 pi thirds, your 28 pi thirds, etc. All right, it's not about you, it's about 2x. So, again, here's what's happening u is equal to these if we leave it unrestricted, so from 0 to infinity. Right, is listing out all these coterminal angles. Well, we're going to say 2x literally is equal to pi thirds. 2x is equal to 7 pi thirds. 2x is equal to 13 pi thirds, etc. You're just solving these equations. 2x is equal to that, that, that. We're solving for x, so you know you're dividing by two, but I'd prefer to multiply by a half. You know because you're dealing with fractions. So basically, it's just going to be pi 6. This will be 7 pi 6. This will be 13 pi 6, et cetera, et cetera. So what is x equal to? Let's start at the top. Um, pi 6, right? Pi thirds times 1 half. 7 pi thirds times 1 half is 7 pi 6. 13 pi thirds divided by times 1 half is 13 pi 6. Wait a minute, 6 goes into 13, 2, and some change, 2 and 1 six times, so you're past the 2 pi threshold. We're only going 0 to 2 pi, so 7 pi 6, we hit our limit. Okay, 4 pi thirds, again, times 1 half would be 4 pi 6. Now, in this case, 4 pi 6, we would put that in lowest terms as 2 pi thirds. Maybe I should be writing that, you know. Yeah, 4 pi 6. Over here, this would be 10 pi 6, which is 5 pi thirds. 16 pi 6, which is 8 pi thirds. But again, you see, 3 goes into 8, 2 and 2 thirds times, so. Sorry, too far. We have 1, 2, 3 only four solutions. So basically you are horizontally compressing the tangent graph by a factor of one half. You're going to have twice as many solutions as you normally have. Maybe I shouldn't have told you that number twice. So you, you think there's a relationship between this number we're multiplying by and the amount of solutions? Yeah, there actually is, but we won't state that. So this is four solutions between zero and two pi. All right. 